Today, I'm gonna to show you how to increase your guitar speed and how to make that speed sound better. How are we gonna do that? Well, I'm gonna show you how to get your two hands in sync because two hand synchronization is a key element of developing your speed on the guitar and making that speed sound great. Many people have pretty good synchronization skills when they're playing at a slow or a medium speed, but once they cross a certain threshold of speed, their two hand synchronization just breaks down. The timing gets off and what they're playing just sounds bad. Many people make the mistake of playing guitar faster than their two hands can remain synchronized. Not only does practicing guitar in this way not help you, it makes the problem of your hands not being in sync much worse because it solidifies some really bad habits in your playing. Hi, I'm Tom Hess. When I was learning to play guitar fast, I had all the same problems I just talked about, plus a bunch of other ones. I could move my fingers kind of fast and pick kind of fast, but it all sounded weak. Now at the time, I didn't realize that my hands were out of sync and that it was this, the hands being out of sync, that caused my guitar playing to get stuck in a rut. I later changed guitar teachers and this made all the difference. My new teacher explained to me why I was stuck and why my playing sucked. He broke down the process of fixing my synchronization problems into a series of steps. Now, when I followed those steps, my playing and speed on the guitar really improved. Over the years, I've added to and refined those steps and have taught them to thousands of my students online to improve their two-hand synchronization and build a lot of guitar speed. And today, I'm gonna to share some of that stuff with you. So let's get started. What you'll see next is an excerpt of a lesson that I taught at a recent HessFest live event. So play it slow. Okay, now play it up to speed. Okay, so it kind of sounds a little bit like like that, okay? That's because the synchronization, the speed is there, but the synchronization isn't totally there yet, okay? So we have to find the point, if, if that's 800, and I, I don't know what it is, but let's assume that was 800. Somewhere below 800, the synchronization is already broken down. Maybe it's at 600, maybe it's at 750, maybe it's at 526, I don't know where. But somewhere it's broken. And then what happened was the synchronization is out of sync, but you've simply increased the speed with that out of sync sound. And now that you're at this threshold or plateau of 800 notes per minute, it's harder to push that forward faster with the sync not being there. So we need to go backwards and, and find where the synchronization broke down so we can build it up from wherever that point is, whether that's 500 or 600 or seven, whatever, okay? so. Play it at half speed one time. Now, let's, let's make that a repeating pattern and gradually, gradually get faster. And let's discover where it breaks down at what speed. Right there, right there, just broke down. It's, it's, it's still a little bit out of sync there. It's broken, okay. I think that the dangerous place here in this particular sequence is right here. The repetition of the same note makes it difficult, because the note is the same, it's a unison. I think the problem here is, because these two notes are the same, if anything with the synchronization breaks down here, it's, it's masked 
by the fact that the note is the same pitch. So we have to be careful of that, okay? So what I want you to do is really accent this note. Yeah, do it again. Synchronization is broken down. So now I also let, forget for the moment about accenting, accenting this note. I do think you should practice it that way sometimes. But I want you to accent every beat. those notes hard. Here's the thing. Here's why we're going to do this. If you're unable to hear at this point or feel at this point that when the synchronization has broken down, if you accent the beats, it will it'll be easier for you to feel that if it's not in sync. You may not yet feel the other three notes, whether they're in sync or not, but at least one out of the four you'll feel. And if the other three are out of sync, they'll probably start to get out of sync on that fourth note, too, okay? Okay. So let's do that and focus on what it feels like to hit those notes. Does, does that feel weird to accent those notes? Yes, it yeah. does, doesn't it? It shouldn't. Those are notes right on the beat. That shouldn't feel weird at all. should feel very natural. But there's something about those notes that makes it feel weird for you, doesn't it? Isn't there? Yep. Do you know what it is? It's insane. No. No, no, no. It feels weird to accent those pitches because they're upstrokes. Okay. Normally when you when you play right, we're accenting downstrokes often. If you were using strict alternate picking, you would you would almost always be accenting on a downstroke. But because we're using directional picking, our accents are not always on downstrokes. The accents occur wherever they occur, dictated by the picking pattern. Okay. So we got a downstroke here. That's the first accent. That's an upstroke. That's our next accent. Upstroke for the next accent. And then another upstroke for the final accent. So it's weird. If you're not used to that, accenting those upstrokes, it feels weird. Okay, so it, it shouldn't feel weird. It, it won't feel weird out for, forever. It just might right now. Okay, so you need to get used to accenting those upstrokes. All right. Yep. Okay. Now, th th there's again, there's no real secret here. All, what's limiting you is the, the synchronization is broken down before you're at your top speed. We need to back up. Find the point where the synchronization has broken down. Practice just below that point and accent the notes that are going to help us verify whether we're in sync or not. Okay, so one of the things was to accent this note because it was a unison we talked about. So it's a, it's a, it's a dangerous spot. It's a, it's a spot where 
out of sync pro synchronization problems could go unmasked if not paid attention to right here. Okay? And the other thing was accent on the beats. Okay? Memorize what it feels like when those notes are accented and it feels good, that the articulation is solid, there's, you feel like it's locked in. Memorize that locked in feeling. Then from there, once that is done, you increase the tempo and increase the speed and the, the speed will increase and it will be a lot easier to, to increase the speed and have the synchronization follow it. Make sense? Yep. That's all it is. That, 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 that's really, literally that simple. Yep. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you very, very cool. much. You're very welcome. Let's talk about how to practice this on your own. Step one, choose any lick that you want to increase your guitar speed on. It doesn't really matter what you pick, just choose one. Step two, play your lick along with the metronome. Step three, identify exactly where your two hands are getting out of sync. You want to know where is the synchronization breaking down, at what point, at what speed. Step four, if you can't hear it, if you cannot hear when the synchronization breaks down, then you need to focus on what it feels like when the synchronization breaks down. So you, what you have to do now is you have to slow it down, play slow, and pick hard. When you pick hard with your picking hand, what that does is it makes it easier for the fingertips of your fretting hand to feel the string vibrating when you're playing the guitar. And you want that sensation in the fingertips of your fretting hand along with the sensation of picking through a string in your right hand, you want to learn what that feels like when it's perfect. So you play it slow so you memorize that feeling. Okay, and again, picking hard will help you to feel that sensation in both hands. Now, step five is to practice your speed licks just before the two-hand synchronization breaks down. That means if, you're, if it breaks down at 100 beats per minute on the metronome, then you want to practice just below that, 95, 97, 98, somewhere in there. Step six, accent the specific notes that are not in sync. So as you speed up, when the synchronization breaks down, not all of the notes are going to go out of sync, but some of them will. Some will be in sync, some probably won't be in sync. You want to accent the ones that are not in sync anymore. Step seven, accent every beat. So for example, if you're playing a series of 16th notes, you want to accent the first of each group of four notes. Step eight, for now, Forget about what perfect playing sounds like and instead learn to focus on what it feels like when your hands are perfectly in sync and when they are not. Step nine, after you memorize what perfect two hand synchronization feels like, it's time to now start to really memorize what it sounds like. Let me know in the comments section what you think of this video and what other topics you would like me to make new videos on. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel and hit that like button. If you want to double your guitar speed while cutting your practice time down in half, I show you how in my free guide titled Double Your Guitar Speed While Cutting Your Practice Time in Half. It's free. Click on the link below to download your copy so that you can increase your speed on the guitar.